There are so many full stack frameworks. It feels like a new one comes out every day. Each one has a unique set of features, but do any have them all? Let's talk about it. So here's the chart. The top here, I have a bunch of frameworks that I am vaguely familiar with or otherwise interested in discussing because of how they handle type safety. And here I have random features I think about for full stack type safety and data fetching. Let's talk about the frameworks I chose. It's an interesting set. I know it's going to be controversial in a lot of ways, what I did and more importantly, didn't include. In fact, I even got feedback I shouldn't have included NextFetch because it's both very early and the creator of NextFetch, Galstar, working at Vercel, is more focused on Next.js app router stuff right now than he is on the library he built. I wanted to include it though, because it was actually really interesting to see another library that was so similar to TRPC. So what did I include here and why? First, I included the Next.js app router. I didn't include get server side props because it's it fails all of these. It would just be a bunch of X's other than co-location. It's rough. Remix is a uh, remix. They are recently discovering type safety, which is cool to see. There's a whole bunch of other features that aren't in this list around full stack, like data fetching and validation, parallelization, stuff like that, that I didn't include here where Remix wins. But this isn't about parallelization. This is about type safety. So we'll get to that in a bit. Obviously, TRPC. Yes, TRPC isn't a framework, but this isn't necessarily about frameworks. This is about tools that let you get data to your client and prescribe ways to build around it. Fresh is the framework by Dino, meant to be their equivalent of something like Next.js. It uses Preact instead of React and actually has some really interesting code gen patterns, which is why I included it in here. Solid Start, which is the new solid meta framework that has a lot of cool patterns being built around it, in particular, the server dollar sign pattern, where you can write a server function anywhere and just call it and it's a normal function. Really nice. SvelteKit, which is fascinating. I really wanted to include SvelteKit here because of how different it is. It takes pieces from every solution here. And obviously NextFetch, which I mentioned before. Now let's talk about the actual features. So first one, co-location. You'll notice that there are X's for TRPC, SvelteKit, and NextFetch. If this was just a chart of like things I like, this would have said co-location free. And then TRPC, SvelteKit, and NextFetch would have had checks here, which would have made those all checks. I'm not sure about co-location. It does make writing your code a decent bit simpler, but it requires a huge mental shift. And even more importantly, a, how do I put it? It's just massive compiler hacks. It introduces a lot of changes to how every part of coding works. And I'm still not fully convinced. Most of these frameworks are built heavily around co-location, which makes the rest of this comparison weird, but I wanted to call that out at the beginning because co-location is by definition strange and is a huge part of what makes the type safety work. In fact, it's part of what makes Next.js's type safety with the app router feel so magical because you have the exact type of what you pass there. You don't have to worry about super JSON, serialization, deserialization. You're just generating the HTML with that exact data on the server. Really interesting stuff going on here. Now let's talk about type safe data fetching. This is the general, when I request data, do I get back type safe data? In Remix, uh, use loader. I have to pass it a generic, but if I pass it a generic of loader and it's typed correctly, that works. That's why they get a half. Everything else gets full points here though, because everything else uses something, be it code gen, be it like import magic. Somehow all of the other frameworks get the types for the data when you fetch them. Type safe mutations are a bit more varied. What I mean here is when you have an action you want to call like post, because you want to post a new tweet or something. What does it look like to query that? Do I get autocomplete? Do I get type safety when I actually fire that event? If I have a function that is for submitting a form, will it type error if I don't have the right data defined when I call it? And I'm surprised at how few of these frameworks actually get this right. I put SvelteKit as half here, but the more I looked into it, it probably doesn't even deserve that because when you define a post, it just takes form data and you have to validate it on their side. This probably should have been an X in retrospect. Solid start because server functions are just functions you write yourself. You can give it a type definition for the function input the way you always would for a function input. And that just works. That same function input is what you call with in solid start when you define a server function. Since in TRPC and next fetch, we're actually defining validators as the input type. We get both validation and typed input. Go to definition. This one was a little more controversial than I thought, but I think it's one of the coolest wins in a TRPC code base. If I just open up one that I have. So this project is a project that is using TRPC. In here, I have api.example.createPost. This is a mutation for creating a new post. And if I command click here, it brings me to the actual backend code. In here, we're in a backend file, source server API routers, 
where an actual backend call is being made, a database creation event is occurring here and we return the post that is created. And if we look here, it is being passed, when I actually call the mutation, this exact value, message content. If I go in here and I change what this input's uh, expectation is, so I have emoji validator as the validator because I share it. But uh, if I go to a different example, like get post by ID, this expects ID to be a string. We can find all references and see all of the places in our code where this exact call is used. So here is get post by ID dot use query ID is props that ID. If I again, just command click, we're back in the back end code from the front end code. I can change this from ID to slug and we'll immediately get a type error here because this is not the correct type anymore. This type that is for the input of this query is defined by the validator that we put in the dot input here. And this is a, a direct relationship where we write a validator that assures us the input here is correct. And we get that over there. That's what we're talking to your PC. When we're in a front end component, when we're using the data, we can command click and get right to where we want to be super simply. Other frameworks do have this to be clear, like Next.js app router, because of the way the data is all being passed and just calling it, things tend to work that way. In Remix, you don't have this because loaders are kind of a magic export thing. If you type everything super correct and manually pass generics to the right places, you can follow the path around. But the idea of like you call use loader and it shows you where that loader came from, it just doesn't do that really. Solid Start does this for server uh, dollar sign stuff when you define server functions, but for route data, it doesn't do this, which is kind of annoying. Svelte does this in a very interesting way where it does generate types. However, it generates types that reference the direct functions you're writing so that you can command click to the function through this generated type from where you are starting when you consume the data. It's weird, but it works. I'm really surprised at how well Svelte solved around these things with code gen. It's not quite there yet, but it's really solid. And obviously next fetch being so similar to TRPC. So what about code gen? <sighs> I don't like code gen. Code gen is when your type definitions and major parts of your experience are coming from some external tool running, watching the changes you make and creating new files based on those changes. So if I am in Svelte kit and I change how data is fetched, I change the shape of the data, it's going to actually update a generated file that is where the types are imported from in the component that you write. This allows us to have separation of concerns and accessing data with the correct types without having to import a server file in a client file. It's a really nice workaround that, again, requires you to have the Svelte kit dev server running to get that working, but it's pretty solid once you get it set up. Fresh's implementation here is a little more jank in that it actually copies all of the types from the same file to a different file and then requires you to import from that other generated file in that same place you started. It's a really weird back and forth, but it does work for type safety. And it was one of the first solutions I saw to do modern like code gen, kind of the GraphQL way to get type safety. It's interesting. I think Svelte Kit's solution here is much stronger, but both are very code gen heavy for the type safety. The big loss you'll have here is if you're in your developer environment and you don't save a file or you make some changes and you don't have the dev environment running, it won't work. Like you won't see the updates in your editor because you need to have the generation running or it won't be an accurate representation in your editor. It's a weird experience. Validation first type safety. I hinted at this a bit when we were looking at the source code. What this means is we don't write input definitions for our functions and for our actions. We write validators as part of our function definition. So in TRPC, when I have get post by ID, it has a dot input and the dot input takes in a Zod object that validates the shape of the, the input. And then when we call this, the input has the correct type based on what we put here in the actual server function. And on the client where we call it, it gets the type safety based on that validator. You write a validator in one place, one time, and now you get type safety both when you consume the function on the client and when you actually run the function on the server with the guarantee that the input is valid and fits that shape. And you can do crazy things in here as a validator like dot min three or four. And now if you don't have four characters, this is going to fail and we won't even run our function. We'll just throw an error. So, so powerful. And it is truly mind boggling to me that more frameworks haven't leaned into validation as part of their data patterns because of how much better it makes our developer experience. Obviously, TRPC and NextFetch both leaned heavily into this. It's a big part of what makes them so powerful. And I hope to see more frameworks learning from this pattern in the future because it makes type safety both 
more accessible because it guarantees type validation on all sides, but it also makes it more reliable because of that validation layer, confirming that when you call something with the wrong data, that you get an error instead of running through that function with the wrong data. You have to write your own validation in all of the other frameworks. And if you don't, you're gonna be risking a lot of potential outages when people send the wrong things to the wrong places. All that said, we got one last section here, client side data updates. Thankful to say this is finally getting there. It has been a while. And honestly, the only things that had this were React Query and Apollo GraphQL. React Query and Apollo GraphQL modernized and really pushed this idea of you fetch data, you have it on the client, and then you can invalidate it in pieces. So if I have a Twitter feed with a bunch of tweets and I like one, I can invalidate just that one tweet and update the data for it on client without having to refetch everything, much less refetch the whole page. A lot of these frameworks expect you to either refetch everything or the whole page. Thankfully, we're seeing frameworks recognize that isn't okay. Solid Start's cache layer is actually really, really cool. I was super impressed with it. Svelte takes this pretty seriously as well. I haven't dug too much into their solution, but they definitely have like key invalidation route based stuff that's pretty powerful. Remix has a refetch that refetches everything, which is fine, not the best. And then Next.js uh, app router doesn't do this yet. There's an RFC up kind of for it, and they've been hinting at how they're gonna handle caching for a while, but it's it's not there yet. And we don't have any way to cache things that aren't done through fetch. It will get there, but we're just getting started. So yeah, that's the state of all these frameworks. Again, I would like to say the goal here isn't to say adopt these things based on what has the most check marks. I don't even think the top row is good. The goal here, is kind of to time capsule this moment where we have all of these frameworks that are all developing in these different ways that are copying from each other, learning from each other, trying different things. And I really wanted to take a second to sit here, capture the exact state of things right now so we can reflect on this in the future, be it a few months, a few years, even decades from now, and look at this and, and laugh about what I thought was and wasn't important and how complex it was to have type safety in our stuff. I do think most of these things are going to be expected defaults in the future and expected parts of every technology we build with. But for now, this is just a list of things I think about a lot and comparison of different frameworks and the ways they do or don't introduce these things. I hope this was helpful. If you want to watch me compare even more frameworks, I have a video here where I go in depth on basically all the different web frameworks and where their strengths and weaknesses are. I like this one a lot. Check it out if you haven't yet. Thank you as always. Peace, nerds.